Hey, welcome to EPM. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Nice to see everyone uh, that has tuned in to EP Live. It's fantastic that you're here. We're going to have a great show for you today. We have got a lot of really cool content to get through. This rundown is going out to our buddy Daniel, otherwise known as Blade Blur, who I saw at E3. It was great hanging out with him, and uh, he's going to be helping us get up a, a, a Discord channel very soon, which I'm psyched about. But let's get started with Blade Blur's Rundown. It sounds like we're going to be getting a lot more diversity in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige has revealed that more female superheroes as well as LGBTQ heroes are coming to the films in the near future. He made the announcement while speaking with two different outlets, Screen Rant and The Playlist. In the Screen Rant interview, he says that they're going to add more and more women until they reach a point where they may even have more female heroes than men. When asked by The Playlist if audiences will be seeing more LGBTQ heroes, he said yes, and there'll be both new characters and existing ones that we might have already met. Marvel's new interest in diversity follows the phenomenal box office performance of Black Panther, which was their first movie headlined by a black hero. This is incredible news. I mean, this is going to make stories much more interesting, and that's what it's all about. We need more points of view, and I applaud Marvel, and I want to see more of this kind of stuff from DC, and, you know, everybody that has these massive franchises that has an opportunity to tell us stories and to employ different kinds of people uh, with different backgrounds to make these stories. I think it's only going to make better movies. I know it's crazy to shake up what we know, but that's exactly what we need. And especially with, with such a crowded, it's not a genre because superhero movies come in all kinds of flavors. There's so many different genres that superhero movies kind of entail. But th that's, you know, open-endedness is precisely why we need new stories. Black Panther was a tremendous roar across the world and across the movie industry, and we need more stuff like that. Absolutely. It's going to be incredible. Now, if you think the Marvel movies make a lot of money, they ain't got nothing on Fortnite. The analytics firm Superdata claims that Fortnite earned $318 bucks in May, making it the best month so far for the game. This is up 7% from the previous month, although the firm also points out that the rate of growth is actually slowing down slightly. These numbers include revenue from all the different versions of Fortnite on the PC, consoles, and mobile devices, although the recent Nintendo Switch version isn't included because it was just released earlier this month. Thanks to the success of Fortnite and other Battle Royale games like Battlegrounds, don't expect the genre to go away anytime soon. Yeah, this is a genre that's going to be here to stay for sure, and we're going to see a lot more uh, variations on the theme. Um, and it's also incredible to see that a game that comes out for free, that everybody can just, you know, put it on whatever device that they want, can make so much money. But it, it stands as testament to the power of the gameplay. The game is just super fun and super accessible, and it deserves this level of success. And it's changing the business, not just because everybody wants to jump on the Battle Royale bandwagon, but there's lots of other things that Fortnite is doing that I think we're going to see in... Uh, a lot of other games going forward, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see an Overwatch um, uh, take on this kind of concept, this Battle Royale concept, but more specifically on a, a free-to-play model that's available on lots and lots of platforms out there. I think Fortnite is uh, it, it, it's a juggernaut not just because of Battle Royale. It's including a lot of people into the experience, and part of it is the cartoony accessibility of the experience as well. It doesn't look like... Um, you know, people are shooting each other in the head in crazy violent ways, even though it's a violent shooter. It's, it doesn't look like a realistic, you know, military type shooter. And I think that is an ace in the hole for uh, Fortnite. And, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo itself looks at that and goes, you know what, we've got this Splatoon type game. Why don't we open that up a little bit more? Uh, very interesting days, but congrats again, as if you need it, Epic Games. Uh, amazing success with Fortnite. Now, speaking of Nintendo, they're continuing to find ways to eliminate all those plastic gaming peripherals. They've released a new update for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe that allows Switch owners to play the game with the cardboard motorbike steering handles from another game, Labo. This makes Mario Kart the first big Nintendo game to make use of the Labo peripherals outside of Labo itself, and it means that they could provide similar cardboard support for other games in the future. The Mario Kart 8 update is available right now. I still have not played around with Labo. I still have no personal hands-on experience with 
with uh, what Labo can mean. I have heard from people that have played with it and they dug it. Um, and it is cool. I mean, one of the things that I applaud is that it isn't plastic and that it is something that, you know, once people are done with some of this stuff, they can recycle it. Presumably, they could remanufacture it themselves if they wanted to, although there's a lot of precision folding and cutting and stuff that's involved with all this stuff. I just love the ingenuity and the, uh, the risk-taking that Nintendo always shows. The, the, the commitment to surprise is really darn cool. I don't think I'm going to be playing uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe with a cardboard steering wheel or a cardboard uh, handlebars, but I still think it's really cool. And I do look forward to one day showing you guys uh, some Labo in the studio and uh, giving you guys my impressions on that. Um, and when that comes, you guys will know. All right, the makers of Alien Isolation might have something similar in gestation. The Creative Assembly has posted a job listing for an unannounced new project that they describe as a tactical first-person shooter. The game is being made by the same Creative Assembly team behind 2014's Alien Isolation so expect similar gameplay. Don't expect it to be an Alien sequel, though, because the same job posting calls the unannounced game a new IP. No word on when it will arrive. As for a sequel to Alien Isolation, there have been rumors about it, but so far nothing has been announced. I love that game. It was terrifying. I know Blake didn't dig it all the way through, and the AI kind of broke down, but they did a really cool job at creating the ambience and the, uh, the, the sense of uh, isolation, no pun intended, and the terror uh, that one would go through in a space station that is overrun by aliens um, and it was really damn freaky and it was so effective. Uh, I have not played that game in VR. I would like to play that thing in VR um, and I would expect that uh, there's a lot of fondness for what Creative Assembly did there and talk about a studio with all kinds of creative chops and lots of ability to create in ga games in different directions. Very, very cool stuff. I can't wait to see what this is all about. I know that they are uh, renowned for their Total War franchise, but it's amazing when they deviate and surprise us with something cool like this. I recently talked about their Viking game as one of my buried treasures. All right, you guys, it's time to take a look in the rear view this day and everything cool. Welcome to This Day and Everything Cool for June 26th. On this day in 2003, gamers were introduced to a very beautiful new character. Capcom released the first Beautiful Joe game on the GameCube in Japan, with the Western release following later that year. Developed by Capcom veterans like Resident Evil creator Shinji Mikami, Beautiful Joe is a side-scrolling beat-em-up with a cool cel-shaded aesthetic that makes everything look like you're playing inside the panels of a comic book. The story focuses on Joe, a comic book fan who's transported into the world of his favorite superhero where he takes on bad guys with different powers. The gameplay also includes platforming elements and puzzle solving, and because it's Capcom, boss battles. The game was ported over to the PS2 a year later, and several sequels followed on consoles and the handheld Nintendo DS. An anime spin-off featuring the character was also created, and Joe has even appeared in other Capcom titles like Marvel vs. Capcom 3. You're all watching that buried treasure like this, aren't you? You want to be playing that game, beautiful Joe, so good, Capcom! And make a new one. Come on, or bring it back. Such an awesome game. Very, very cool buried treasure. Uh, great to see you in here, Taz, who was talking about the uh, the housing prices in Vancouver. <laughs> um, when we have weather like this, though, Taz, it's so beautiful. Uh, it almost seems worth it. And then the rain comes, and then you you go, why? Why is it so expensive here? Tyler Fisher, good to see you. Thanks for creating the unofficial Facebook fan page for Electric Playground. I think we have a few EP fan pages or or uh, groups about EP and reviews on the run and Vic's Basement and stuff on, on Facebook. Uh, but it's very sweet that you've created a new one. And uh, if, if you guys are on the Facebooks, go and search that out for Tyler. Adrian Leon using the one emoji that we've created so far. Thank you, sir. <laughs> That's super cool. Steven Silva, I believe, w was it you that sent the picture of you and... Um, um, a lady friend uh, in EPN t-shirts yesterday. If it was, thank you so much. That was such a cool image to receive. I showed my wife. She had a huge smile on her face. It's, it's incredible to see people with the, the EPN shirt out there. It just blows my mind. Uh, everybody's talking about Battletoads Royale right now, which would be rad. Um, and be careful what you wish for, guys. Uh, Wesley West, great to see you here. We have got a lot of cool things to talk about today, so without any more hesitation, let's go and visit with the friends that we have at Sony Bend talking about Days Gone.
working on this thing a long time. We had just come off of Uncharted Golden Abyss for the Vita, and we were scouting around for ideas, and we were huge fans of Sons of Anarchy. The Walking Dead was really big, still really big. You know, World War Z had just come out, I think, and we just had this idea of like, okay, what if you had an open world, and you could ride a motorcycle through it, and it was super dangerous, and hordes and hordes and hordes of freakers were one of the things that you had to deal with. And so that's kind of where we started. We were like, okay, we need something for the PS4. We wanted it to be next gen. What could we do to push the technology? So pushing the technology in terms of how many enemies we can have on a screen, how detailed we can make an open world, that's really what we've been working on. It was super important to tie the persona of your player character, Deacon St. John, who was a former member of a motorcycle club at Outlaw MC, the Mongrels. And, you know, that doesn't play a, a huge part in the story per se, but it does in terms of his backstory. So, you know, his love of the open road, his refusal to, you know, sort of be under authority, his, you know, his love of his bike. The bike is so important that way because Deacon only has the one bike. And when it gets, you know, gets taken away from him very early on and he spends a lot of the game trying to rebuild it. And we just wanted you to be attached to it. We didn't want you to feel like, you know, you could whistle for a new one if you broke it or you could, uh, you know, sell it and buy another one. So, you know, vehicles are not disposable in this game. What we've tried to do is create enough tools for the player to be able to play it the way he wants. So every encampment you go into has different parts for sale for your bike and different weapons for sale and different ways to upgrade certain aspects of your weapons and your bike. You know, it just depends on how you want to do it. So you could, you, each one of those encampments has their own economy. They have their own trust system. So if you want to buy a sniper rifle from Alki in the Hot Springs, you have to earn trust at that camp or he's not going to sell it to you. And the same thing with the you know, with the bike. It's like, depending on what you want to upgrade or how you want to do it, you know, what kind of paint job you want or whatever, it's completely up to you. He's right. Who the hell is around here knows how to rebuild a carburetor? Sam's awesome. It's like he's, uh, you know, he's been part of the project from almost the very beginning. He's one of the first, in fact, he is the first actor we've ever worked with who's a digital double, which means that we brought him into our studios in San Diego and scanned him in. Full performance capture. And working with Sam is awesome because he's a huge gamer. So he plays a lot of games. He knows about games. He knows, you know, what it means when we say, okay, look, player pose. And, you know, we, the player's got to be, you know, the player's got to be able to do this. So, you know, you got to get the, not just the emotional acting right, but the physical acting right. And he gets all that. And, uh, yeah, he's been a, he's been a, he's been awesome. I'm not here for him. I'm here for you. It's going to be strictly single player. And that was a decision we made very early on because, we, you know, we're a small team. We're 130 people now. And, you know, even if we want to do multiplayer, that would take a lot of resources away from the single player experience. And we really just wanted to have the best single player game we could make. I just played the game all the way through on my second playthrough and it took me a little over 30 hours playing only the golden path so one of the missions we showed today was i'm no doctor which is where deacon has to go and find sterile bandages for his badly injured friend that job depending on how you play it and how good you are and what approach you take will take about 20 minutes and you know so you've got a lot of a lot of time after that to be in the world come on, come on. Three cheers for single player games. Hip hip hooray. Hip hip. Hip hip. I heard you guys. You're amazing. Uh, Blake, put up the picture of Steve Silva and his wife wearing EPN t-shirts. Look at how cool that is. That's so good. Thank you so much, Steve, for wearing that. I don't know what your wife's name is, but that's so sweet. Um, it's, a, it's a total trip to see people wearing these things. I got a few other pictures in there as well. Um, but uh, if, you, if you pick one up, please send because it, it blows my mind and, and we'll do our best to, uh, uh, to, to give you some love in the show, which is uh, the least that we can do. But thank you very much for your support. Uh, but you know what? We've got a brand new buried treasure for you guys. Let's go. Back in 1997, a company called Namco, which is now called Bandai Namco, released a game called Klonoa Door to Phantom Isle for the original PlayStation. It went on to have a sequel for the PlayStation 2. There was a Game Boy Advance game. There were remakes. I think one was made for the Wii. But Klonoa was a cool 2.5D platforming action game, which, you know, came after Super Mario 64 and sort of that brand new doorway that was open to full 3D platforming action titles. So in that sense of the word, Klonoa kind of... Uh, 
Silva was overshadowed by other greats in the genre. And it, technologically, it just didn't, you know, show us the best that uh, platformers could be, but it was still pretty fun. And what's cool about Klonoa now, when you look at it in the rear view, is that it's aged pretty well. It was still using polygons, but the idea that you could traverse through the world in kind of a familiar two-dimensional way, 2.5D way, uh, I think has helped to keep this game looking kind of fresh and feeling kind of fresh. The jumping mechanics and all of the special abilities that Klonoa had, he has these big floppy ears and this kind of right ripped out of the 90s kind of clothing aesthetic. But it was charming, uh, it was beautiful, it kind of evoked some of the uh, the stuff that you saw in things like Knights, the, uh, the classic Sega title in there. And it just had this really cool, unique style that was all its own. And Klonoa has appeared in, you know, various other Bandai Namco games over the years, Soul Calibur and Tekken and stuff. And I think there's a reason for that. There's a, a you know, a lot of charm. And I think this is one of those beloved characters that has virtually disappeared from our industry. And I think the time is right for us to get something really cool. A Switch Klonoa game would be great, even if it was a remaster of the original, maybe taking some of the assets from the Wii game and redoing those or something like that. Or giving us a full 3D go anywhere adventure with this character would be really rad. I know that's an expensive endeavor, but for now, all we've got is to go and try to hunt down the original 1997 PlayStation copy and find a PlayStation that will actually play this disc. But it was very cool, and because it's been a long time, Klonoa, I'm calling you a buried treasure. Uh, we've got Blade Blur totally freaking out about that very treasure. He loves uh, Lunate's Veil. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. Uh, Lunatia's Veil vale, Luna uh, is one of his all-time favorite games. Yeah, Klonoa was sweet, and it is weird. I agree. Somebody said it's weird to have uh, Bandai in front of Namco, but uh, the, Namco was a juggernaut. Bandai was a very, very, very big uh, content creation company as well. Together, massive, and they're having an incredible year. Lots of really good games coming out from those guys. Uh, but uh, yeah, Klonoa, super cool, super cool title. Would love to see more. Uh, but some of you guys were asking about um, uh, Days Gone and my thoughts on it because I did get some good hands-on time with that title at that event where it, that was actually me doing the interview with John. And uh, I thought the, uh, the game... Uh, was a ton of fun. It was a, uh, uh, it's right up my alley. Like I am a big fan of third person, uh, single player action adventure titles. Those are the games that I, I get lost in. Those are the games that I replay because I like to kind of test the systems a bit and see how well I can do with a second replay. So I felt like I was in familiar territory. Um, I liked the mechanics. It felt comfortable. I certainly noticed that uh, there was a ton of detail. And because of that, there was uh, a little bit of a, you know, a frame rate uh, hiccup or a stumble here and there, but they've got lots of time to tweak and finesse this. It looked really slick on the PS4 Pros that I was playing it on and on the big widescreen, uh, uh, you know, prob probably 4K monitors I was playing everything on. It looked really nice. And the attention, just as John was bringing up, the uh, connection to the motorbike, um, and that's why I asked him about that, and he replied, wonderfully in the interview um, is the motorbike is sort of an extension of Deacons and you really feel it like you've got to go and find the parts and, and you know gas it up and take care of it um, and it feels big it feels like there's a lot of area to explore so you would not want to be without that motorcycle which is great you know um, it is weird to me that it is not at all tangentially connected at all to The Last of Us but uh um, certainly we've got many multiple flavors of zombies and they're calling them freakers in this game, but there's lots of different, uh, undead varietals out there to choose from. So one more, as long as the gameplay is really tight and, and fun and you're swarmed by hordes that you have to take care of and you've got nasty humans that you've got to take care of and the mission structures are cool. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And you know what? Sony Bend has got a great track record. If you look at their portable stuff uh, and their work on Siphon Filter, they've done a lot of really cool games. I love that John says that they're a small team. There's only 130 of us. I guess it's, small teams are relative in uh, in video games, right? But uh, he said we have... We only have 130 people, so we didn't we couldn't do multiplayer because that would have added a whole bunch of resources. I thought, okay, that's that's commitment because 130 people is a lot of people, uh, and they are all focused on making something really cool. And you know, I had uh, Sam Witwer on EP Live not too long ago. You guys should watch that interview; it was fantastic, and he goes into great detail on his thoughts on Star Wars. Uh, but uh, we talked a lot about the length of time and the commitment and the uh, 
the quality um, equation that Sony Band and PlayStation proper are sort of thrusting onto Days Gone. I think it will be special. I think it's getting overshadowed by Ghost of Tsushima and The Last of Us 2 and Spider-Man. Um, you know, and there's been a lot of big AAA exclusives from Sony. Uh, but I think that game is really sweet. And the other game that I think is really sweet from Sony, which I also got hands-on time with, and we'll have an interview for you guys about pretty soon, is Dreams, which is also a remarkable exclusive. Sony knows how to make exclusive games. Uh, but you know what? We've got a game now that is not exclusive to the PlayStation 4. You can play it on the Xbox One and the PC as well. And it involves dinosaurs. <laughs> Frontier Developments has been a very cool developer for a very long time, and their latest park simulator is called Jurassic World Evolution. And yes, it is uh, lifting off on the insanely successful Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World franchise. I can't believe how many movies there are, and there have been plenty of games over the years. Does this one stack up? Does it really honor the license well? Uh, yeah, it does. Actually, it's a, it's actually a very fun Jurassic experience, and the idea here is that it's not so much about just uh, you know being a dinosaur or hunting dinosaurs or being scared of the dinosaurs. It's how do you manage a park well? How do you keep the customers happy? How do you keep your dinosaurs alive and thriving? How do you genetically enhance them to uh, be able to handle all kinds of challenge and make them interesting to look at? And then you've got to create kind of arenas for people to come and watch them, and hopefully they stay penned up and don't break through their fences and go and eat your guests and some of the scientists that are milling about inside of your park. Uh, it, it's really an easy game to get into, which is, I think, something to commend Frontier for. This is a company that has done lots of uh, park simulation type experiences in the past. Recently, they did the Zoo Tycoon game. They also did the, uh, the Disneyland game um, in partnership with Xbox. They've done this kind of stuff before, and they're, you know, adept at dealing with lots of complicated systems, and they've kind of streamlined everything here. This is really um, not so much about building everything up brick by brick. All of that stuff is kind of already made for you. You have some customizable, you know, pieces in there. You can upgrade the things so they'll cost less power or they'll cost less money to kind of operate. But you don't have that granular level of detail that you may have experienced in other park simulator games. I don't think that's much of an issue here, though, because I played this on the Xbox One. It's also out for the PS4, and I suspect it's going to be easier to play on the PC. But as a consolized version of a theme park kind of scenario like this, it's fluid, you know, and you're not sort of dealing with cumbersome mechanics and, you know, trying to position your cursor exactly over a tiny little speck that you're trying to, you know, toggle or, or uh, you know, fix or repair or anything like that. It's very easy to navigate using the thumbsticks and, you know, selecting the items and stuff. You have a menu that's uh, constantly accessible to you on the left side of the screen and you can, you know, choose the paths that you want to create around your buildings, lay down the electrical power that you're going to need. Uh, you have some landscape options in there so you can, you know, grow your ground a little bit or dig in and create pools for your dinosaurs to swim in or drink from. Um, and of course you can drop goats in with the carnivores um, and you're trying to sort of maintain a revenue flow, you're trying to keep your customers happy and then you're sent on all kinds of missions from all kinds of uh, uh, different staff members that pop up including Ian Malcolm which, which is voiced by uh, Jeff Goldblum. More Jeff Goldblum in this game than in uh, Jurassic world uh, fallen kingdom by the way which is pretty cool and they've also got representations of Bryce Dallas Howard and uh, Chris Pratt's characters in this game as well they're just uh, still images that pop up every once in a while and their voice uh, narration or their voiceover acting uh, comes in various flavors of freaking out depending on how you're doing with your dinosaur they of, of course you get lots of encouraging messages when you're making lots of money and everybody is caged in and the guests are happy uh, and you'll You'll get less of that when there's a huge storm happening and you've got a T-Rex running around eating everybody.
it's fun, man. It's fun to watch this. It's addictive to kind of, uh, you know, see your little your little sort of train set operating. You do you can also place down monorails, by the way. Um, and it's cool that you can take control of some of the vehicles, like jumping into a chopper and flying over all the stuff that you've placed and watching and seeing all your dinosaurs. And you can take control of the dart gun if you want to knock out your dinosaur. Uh, you can also drive the Jeeps around and those little gyro bubble things. Uh, it's it's slick. The, ga- the graphics are cool. The music is absolutely uh, appropriate and uh, evocative of all the Jurassic Park movies. I had a tough time putting the controller down. Now, it is definitely a slower paced experience. You're not running from dinosaurs, but even though the pace is a little slower and a little bit more cerebral, it, it's fun. This is cool. I was very impressed and, you know, I was kind of disappointed with uh, Fallen Kingdom. There's some cool bits in it, but I actually think that this is a, a better adherence to the, the, you know, the principles and the foundations of the Jurassic Park franchise. I dig this game. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Super cool game. That totally makes me want to go back into that world. Uh, It's, you know, it's surprising what games hit at the right time. You know, I think you kind of have to be in the mood for a park simulator and you kind of have to, you know, put all of your, your sort of desires to get into an action packed go and hunt the dinos kind of experience and i think you'll have a very good time that was a very well made jurassic park experience and much more satisfying than fallen kingdom the movie uh anyways let's move on we got a code for the crew two in the house and uh, we thought we'd take a look at it together have not touched this except for the early playthrough that ubisoft provided for us uh last year it's been a long time um so the game comes out very soon uh is it out today Three days from now? Okay, so it's out very soon. Uh, there's no embargoes or anything that said go ahead and uh, stream some. So let's stream some. We're going to uh, continue right here. Uh, let us know how it looks and how it sounds. Blake's going to join me Hi, and everyone. he can follow along on the look, chat. Look, I have my, my Resident Evil shirt. There you go. We're, we're in the, the, sat, the swag. I love it. Okay, it's so way I'm too ch- big though, Vic. I'm choosing my... Uh, it is, but shrink that. Shrink that shirt. Is that Paris Hilton? Uh, I'm choosing my rising star. Let's see. Who am I going to be here? So we will get into this. Okay. Let so me know if the game is too loud. Sounds pretty good in my ear. Yeah, but uh, the levels are totally different on my... Uh, okay, gotcha. Um, I, don't, I, I don't like guys that... That, that looks like Paris choose. Hilton. A little bit, yeah. It's all right. <laughs> Do they have? Does Ubisoft have I'll be like? This guy. Do they have like watchdogs clothes that you can wear? Hold. Okay. Yes, there is additional content that you can get. Yeah. You, the you, Assassin's you, Creed. Ubi, Ubi plays that. We've got a lot of loot crate talk going on here and DLC talk here. Okay, so let's check out uh, um, the Crew Two. I, I played the first one a little bit. I know that uh, Ben and Jose enjoyed it, and then it went on to become a smashing successful game because I think it was offered up for free. I think we're going to start to, in, you know, I talked a little bit about that in the rundown today, but I think we're going to start to see a lot more games come in at a very low dollar amount. Yeah. Um, one thing we haven't talked about in the rundown is that GameStop is up for sale right now. Is it really? Yeah, they're trying to okay, see that. Guys, they're trying to sell on, GameStop. Come on, get to move on. We're going on soon. Um, so ah, Hero Yuki like, Carter. The move hey, to digital is Hero. so imminent. Pleasure to meet you. It's not even funny. I was beginning funny, to think you and your driver weren't going to make people. it. I'm from Live, the camera company uh, sponsors prices are going to I'll be heading up this and and people, thing. people well, are going to want to be uh, Look, serve up their games again. for a lot I'm less. Really stoked and then, about you know, yes. piecemeal for the game service, service thing cuz it yeah. brings the, the initial we're always on the lookout for yeah. new talent. Yeah. Yeah. You and your friend fit well, the bill. Fortnite is proving it out. And I don't have to tell you this. Yeah, that's a free to play yourselves in this race. You'll see a lot of doors opening up for you. about stuff and it is We won't disappoint you. Disappoint me. That's not what this is about. I'm all for more people playing. It's your chance to impress people who matter. The events my company organizes are a f- What is it with Ubisoft and drones? I feel like every Ubisoft <laughs> game has a drone in it. And or Assassin's and, Creed, you have a bird. And drones are so illegal, too. They're st- yeah. like you, you can't fly them anywhere. Every, every Ubisoft game, I'm <laughs> flying a drone for some reason. Like, what, what is going on here? This is not the beta. This is the full game of uh, The Crew 2. We're yeah, starting from uh, we got the code early. Mi- minute one here, Frank B1. We Welcome the to the city that never rollers. sleeps. In this event, you'll so see New York game, taken over by world, racers in a way you country? never could have yes. imagined. So it's, basically it's not just the city. It's a playground for the best pilots hours, so and drivers of today we'll and just, tomorrow. We're see everything in the game. We're, we're doing this? Ride or die, guys. Yep. Okay, here we go. Live extreme. Oh, it's extreme. Oh, it came out of the white floor. Okay. 
I was saying oh. game audio is too loud, so I'm going to turn it down. Mm. Okay, hold on, hold on. I can turn it down here. No, no, it's, it's different on mine, but trust me. Okay. It's not your end. How, how's that? I, I crash because the, uh, the frame rate is not perfect in my... Uh, I turned it down. Maybe it does make it How's that? Because it's adjusting the output. Is that okay? Is that all right? Okay. Hold on. I'm gonna restart this race because I hit the wall right away. Uh, I didn't know you could adjust the level on my end. Yeah, I can right there. Okay, so I can't restart the race. Okay. No restarts. Is is in this game online only? Yeah, maybe that's why. I think that's why. Yeah. Okay. Well, I suck. I can't look at the TV. I have to look at the uh, at the laptop today, because there is a little the bit of a frame rate frame, frame rate streams. lag. Now, can you change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I like miles though. I, I, I guess it's appropriate because you're in the U.S. And I've been playing racing games for so long. It used to be miles. <laughs> what, what city is this, Vic? Uh, this looks like New York. Is it not? What we should do is go to San Francisco and try to find the development. Wrong way. Okay, I gotta pay attention here. Go this way. Okay. That's that's something I did when I played Watch Dogs 2 at a Ubisoft uh, event at Ubisoft San Francisco. Yeah. I found the building I was in. Okay. <laughs> it was really funny. All right. Let's see how we do here. Roads are slippery. I am so far behind the pack. It's not even funny. I think you got to drift. How do you drift? My Porsche is handling pretty good though. But if you drift, oh, here we go. Here we faster, go. Right? Realism. Speaking of soaring, get a lot of that jump. There you have I like the look of this game. It's pretty good. That's cool. Wow. How come there are no pedestrians? Uh, that's PS5. I'm playing on <laughs> I'm playing on the uh, the regular PlayStation 4 because by the way. This isn't the pro. Because they don't want you to be able to run people over. I mean, they have to they have to render all of that. Yeah, that's true. I don't know why the frame rate looks a little low on our stream, but the game itself is a lot smoother than that. Yeah, so. it's cuz it's going through the laptop yeah. and the TV and then we're going to the to outputting it to the stream. In, in streaming lag Whoa, too. Oh, what the heck is going on here? It's I like saw this in the, Yeah, I saw that in the trailer. That's cool. Okay. Because it's trying to show how you can switch. Okay, cool. So I'm in a boat. Yeah. I'm in a boat. That's a, a Lonely Island song. Yeah. I'm sure. Old <laughs> L to get extra speed boosts. <laughs> I think that. Every time somebody loads up the boat sequence, that's what they say. I'm on a boat! <laughs> <laughs> Every stream is gonna have that. I'm on a boat! Thanks for the super chat, Blade Blur. Oh, Blade Blur, you rock, man. You'll what part of New York is this? Winning, of course, this is... But that's not the only way. Do a spectacular stunt. Uh, oh, I know. This, is it New York? I think it's supposed to right. still be New York. Check it out. Isn't that the... What bridge is that? The... Queen, Queensboro? Because that's that island, right? Where the... Uh, Isn't it? I'm pretty sure this is New York. I don't know, dude. I imagine. Hold on. I think I, I can zoom. No, I can't. There's a map mode in here that I can get to, but I can't get to it just yet. Because I'm in training... Training mission one here. Yeah, this is... Yeah, people are saying this is just the intro, so it's going to put you through every vehicle. Yeah. So you're going to switch to an airplane, I think. Okay, cool. I'm seeing the airplanes up above us right now. I'm way behind the other racers. I've got 700. And, oh, I've got a thousand. I've got. Well, look at the amount of followers I'm getting. Looking at the follower count, I'm going to run into the ground. Well, to bring you down, Faramir is saying this is like watching his grandmother play a racing game. Oh, Faramir. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, an inception moment's happening again. Here we go, here we go. Batter, it's a tsunami in front of us. We kick it up a notch for the grand finale. Oh, switching to the airplane. That's cool. The, I guess that's the smart thing with Ubisoft, because they... These run on all the same engines, right? Don't yes. They? So uh, they build these giant open-world engines. The Snowdrop engine? Yeah. Yeah. 
Because they build these big open world engines for like Assassin's Creed and Watch Dogs, and then it's like, well, we can make a racing game out of this too. You would imagine that they use a lot of the same assets. Yeah. It'd be silly if they didn't. I mean, uh, they always have so many big games coming out. I know. They seem like a relatively small publisher compared to like Activision. Uh, I mean, they're, they're enormous. They have developers everywhere. Uh, I guess it's just because they're family owned. So I'm thinking of them as. Yeah. A driver who attracts huge. enough followers will open up new styles of racing. Crash into the Empire State Building. I, I'm curious about the engine behind the... Uh, oh, look, they changed the Empire State Building so to make it just different enough so they didn't have to pay anyone. Oh, sure. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm curious about Starlink's engine, if it's using stuff that yeah, they're I, using in something like this. I remember when we watched the, the gameplay and I asked you? Yeah. I, I think it runs on the Beyond Good and Evil 2 engine. Oh, Whatever, really? Whatever they're building for Beyond Good and Evil 2, hmm. Starlink is like a watered down. For, it just feels like a simplified Thank version of Beyond Good and Evil 2 and remember, to me when I looked at it. Okay. That was cool. We switched between all these different vehicle types in one race. I dug that. Okay, yeah. The, the Statue of Liberty is not there in real life. It's pretty. Is that a, uh, a nuclear... Uh, Where? Uh, what are those... Where they look like isn't boobs. that like a sewage thing? Sewage thing Aren't like they, that? Isn't that sewage well, I hope refinery? It's not sewage refinery right behind the Statue of Liberty. Well, in real life, it's not like that. <laughs> okay. The, the Statue of Liberty is in the middle of the water. It's not okay. an island in the middle, like surrounded by land like that. Cool. It is a I'm a rookie. Is that you I there? I have my kaboom hat on. Oh, going to San Francisco. Here we go. Yeah, this is also a very... Con they've obviously condensed everything. Yeah, it's not, it's not the entirety of the uh, yes. America. <laughs> <laughs> Took forever to play that game. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Take, the water uh, looks gorgeous. Take two days to travel from Portland yeah. to San Francisco. It's in an LA. You wow, always, this looks amazing. LA is always way smaller in games than it is yeah. in, in real life. All right, live map. Let's go. Yeah, like what Detroit? Detroit's not there. How do you want to start? Way up there, like that. Michigan is not shaped like that. That's not the shape of Michigan in real life. No, it's more straight. It's not Where's like, Windsor, Ontario? It'd be right anybody watching the water. from Windsor, Ontario? It'd be right there on the right on this, from the this water. side of the bridge right here. Look or at no, that. Well, on the, on Canada's the Canadian just side. wilderness. No, that's Michigan still. Okay, but on the Canadian side. Okay. Yeah. yeah do they have a tunnel from Detroit to to Windsor? <laughs> no, there's a bridge, but it's a bridge in, okay. in real life. There is. Okay. I should know this. I used to live in Windsor. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to watch Detroit television, and I used to love yeah, it. Yeah, they don't have any Canada here. Seattle is all the way in like that. That's I cool. didn't know Sacramento was so close to Seattle, Vic. <laughs> Where's Sacramento? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's like a 10 minute drive. <laughs> but look at this. Look at this map. I think we can it's go gorgeous, all, yeah. all through here. It's pretty accurate. Oh, too. my Lord. Yeah, it's just a condensed version. Oh, my version. God. Yes. Yeah, we should be able to see most of this in 30 minutes, guys. So. <laughs> Um, so we saw New York. I guess we'll. Uh, why don't do we drop right into? No, do they have New Orleans? Let's go to New Orleans. Uh, I don't know if it's all. It'd be down. I have to. I think yeah, I... there it is. Yeah, I see it. It's above you, over to your left, on your right. Up here. Yeah. Right there. Cool. I don't think I can just drop there, can I? I don't know. The orange one looks relatively close to it. Can I just? Oh my God! No way. Oh wow! That's gorgeous. Wow, that is cool. I'm in someone's house. <laughs> <laughs> I am like driving around New Orleans now. That is unbelievable. That looks like New Orleans. Smaller, but you know. That is crazy. Okay, so we're going to zoom in. Real out life, there would New be a Orleans. bunch of like drunk people on the street. Holy crap, man. That's very cool. Um, I think I have to go to one of the icons, right? So yeah. let's go to the off road trail here. Let's do it. I think we'll we'll be able to see every area on this map. Did they put Trump's border wall? <laughs> I don't know. It'll be pretty close to where you are. <laughs> you could race along it. That'd be <laughs> hilarious. All right. Now, nobody, Paul Adams said nobody's puking or passing out on the sidewalk. Yeah. It, when we were there, we were there in January. It was yeah. party time. Even though it was freezing, yeah. I had to buy a sweater because I was yeah. so cold. It was colder there than here. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe it. I didn't bring any clothes to be prepared for that weather. And in New Orleans, it's party time all the time. Yeah, like, it was still partying. 8.30 yes. in the morning on a Wednesday, it was like there were people partying in <laughs> Bourbon Street. It's my kind of town. <laughs> they got their beads going. What is it? 
and all their nice made in China trinkets and all the gift shops. We'll find out. Okay, come on, let's go. I, I don't know if I need the story. Do you guys need the story? We're gonna skip. I don't need story. no story, Vic. Okay. I just need fast cars. All right, fast cars and lots of and, really pro cool and Ford product placement. Yeah. All right. So they had money for the vehicles, but not for the buildings. <laughs> is, that, is that what it was? Well, I guess you can't drive the buildings, so. Right. Some, Luby, some Ubisoft lawyer was like, yeah, we don't want to have to pay to use the Empire State Building, so just to make it look different. This is cool. Pretty cool. I'm seeing, I'm seeing some pop in, but this is PS4 launch, not PS4 Pro. So. Whoa. Whoa, dude. Um, I was in Phoenix for spring break, and uh, that's what this... Mm. These rocks kind of remind me of. Less green, though, in Phoenix. Yeah. We went into Sonoma as well, or Sedona, Sedona. Uh, Gorgeous, red, like red rocks and cacti everywhere. You know, you're Just not like allowed this. to destroy cactuses like that in real life, Vic. Oh, really? Yeah, it's bad. What That's happens? Because it's you're like well, you get your, you get the prickles in your butt. Well, but what else? it's like illegal because oh, it's illegal. It's like if you went into the forest here and started chopping a tree down. Okay. You know, you're not supposed to do it. Right. This feels a bit lonely. People in the chat are like criticizing Black Ops 4 somehow. We got to block <laughs> the, ch the chat. The uh, chat like descended into it, it Call of Duty hate. Uh, is it because of <laughs> Battle Royale? Is that what it is, guys? Fortnite's still gonna take it to uh, Call of Duty. So Taz is saying there's no Teslas in the game. No Teslas. I don't think there'll be any Teslas. Period. In, in no, not very long time. You think they're going out? I saw your tweet about. I think it. Elon Musk is going out. You think? What, what, what was it that uh, made you say that he's going crazy? Uh, just what everything he, he said in the last, like, three months. Well, he's he's under a tremendous amount of pressure, and he's a pretty open yeah. CEO, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm the last person to criticize people for saying stupid shit on Twitter, <laughs> but when I look at it and go, yeah, that's dumb to say, I, it must be pretty bad. In terms of what revealing that uh, just a whole, I don't want to sabotage. Something. Yeah, and a whole bunch of other stuff too. I don't want to yeah. get too political, but he's there's been a, like five different moments over the last three months where I've looked at Elon Musk and say, oh, he's going crazy. Well, he's sort of he's gone full blown Howard Hughes. You think? A lot of people are saying that. Not yeah, bad. we'll see. It could just be Ford and other traditional automakers you. trying to spread lies to. Yep, yeah. we'll see. But we don't want to get political. <laughs> I don't want to get political, so. <laughs> I really don't, honestly. So Sonoma is in California. What's the one in... Uh... Sonoma is in California. What's, what's the one yeah. in Nevada? Uh, no, the one in, um, in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. Sedona. So, yeah, Sedona. Yeah, Arizona, yeah. Beautiful. If you guys ever have the chance to go, you should go. And and if anybody lives in the Pacific Northwest area, the Vancouver, Seattle area, and it's like November, <laughs> yeah, go to, or December, go to Phoenix. or January, or February, Phoenix or in December March. is like Vancouver in the summer. It's the, great. Like it's it's the antidote if you go there. <laughs> it's like just gorgeous sunshine, not went, too hot. Don't go in there in the summer though. No, because the airplane tires melt on the runways yeah. and get so hot. But yeah, I went there in December a couple of years ago, and we had to de-ice the plane when we took off from Vancouver because there's snow on the ground. Should we ride and then this we motorbike? landed in Phoenix, and it was beautiful. Oh, it has a first-person walk-around mode. Yeah, That's and I've got cool. choppers here too. Should I ride this chopper? Get to the Do chopper. it. Ride the chopper to New <laughs> Orleans. To go up in that. Uh, I cannot. I think I. Are you like stuck behind a? I don't know what's happening. That's a little clunky. This might be a game of just because you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> well, they delayed it a couple times, right? Maybe they were trying to work out the last minute. Uh... I can test drive the chopper. Should we test drive it? Do it. I think I can. Do it. Yeah. Okay, cool. go go all the way. Just fly it all the way to New Orleans. Well, or no, for, see if you can land on top wait of the. A sec. How do I? Uh, <laughs> how do I go up? There it is. Okay. See if you can land on top of the bluffs. Okay. The, the Devil's Tower. Or wow, that's that gorgeous. Is. Ubisoft knows how to make a game look good. They know how to do big and make it look imp 
impressive. Whoa. Bump, 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 bump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your test drive is going to expire. Oh, BS. How am I going to make it to New Orleans? Look at the city over there. There's some kind of city up there. Is that Vegas? I don't know. Oh! I'm back her up. Uh -oh. Now, I wonder, is there any... Uh -oh. um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, test drive I, I bet you you could find, like, an Assassin's Creed Easter egg up there. Oh, man, like there's a... got to be. Yeah. Like, they've crafted so much map here. They've got to, like, I'm sure the Ghost Recon guys are running through one of the areas. <laughs> Find Sam Fisher hiding somewhere. Yeah, totally. Guys, we're way off mission. Jordan Cunningham can't wait for February 22nd. Yeah. Yes. It's going to be a big day. Epic day. Um, can I ride this? Let's select the, the, uh, the bike. Let's see. Do it. I have 9,000 followers. I'm going to go for a... Uh, what is the followers? That's like... I guess that's how I'm growing. They, they, they had something similar in um, Forza Horizon games here. Can I get this That's like one? your reputation or something? Yeah. That, that's no. a nice commentary on the times we live in. Rather than having currency, you estimate your value based on how many people follow you on social media. Yeah, that's, that's the way it is right now. So can I not get this one? You have, it's 98,000 and you have like 7,000. Okay, select. No, it's too expensive for you. Oh no, you, yeah, it's 98, you have 14, right? Okay. Gotcha. So I can drive this one. Here we go, the Red Bull car. Uh, free. Got it. All right, I wonder if I can pay for these. There's some cool cars in here. I wonder if they'll have like Microsoft and Nintendo. I only have 9,000 Bitcoins or whatever. They're telling me I have. Color is good. Let's is go. that meant to be bitcoins? I don't know. Looks like a B, right? Yeah. I wonder if they have Microsoft and Nintendo at in Seattle, like their headquarters. Like, would Ubisoft put in a little put in little um, references to well, other? I can guarantee that it won't be in the PlayStation Four version of the game. <laughs> there will not be a Microsoft. Well, they wouldn't have a Nintendo sign, <laughs> but would they have that building? Maybe, like, maybe. Yeah, that's not what Florida looks like. You can see what they want in your photo album. The, not mandatory, in real life. but the way you roll looks like easy money. Okay. So I can go anywhere I want to. Can okay. you sail in a boat from New York all the way to Miami? Um what is this area here? A rally raid. Uh what do you want to do? Plane? Uh yeah, whatever. Plane's probably the fastest way to check stuff out. Okay, let's go do it. So I just unlocked that car, but I, I wasn't able to just go drive an event. <laughs> Crash Bandicoot standing outside Nintendo's headquarters shouting obscenities from Samia 111. That is an incredible <laughs> visual image. Well, you can play Crash Bandicoot on the new... On the Switch today. Yeah. Yeah. It comes out. I, I, we, we actually are going to be getting a code for that, so I'll probably stream that uh, um, either tomorrow or the, the next EP live. I have not played Crash Bandicoot since it came out on the PlayStation 1. Welcome. And Blade Burr loves the uh, Nintendo Inside. UK and Xbox I'm UK uh, and uh, tweets you asking them to play um, Here, uh, some uh, Minecraft together. Brilliant. That whole marketing campaign was just wonderful. Yeah, and they did one for uh, Fortnite as well. All right. This is nice. cool. Nice. Now try a roll. The, the map is not as detailed as like Grand Theft Auto, but it's not really meant to be. Until you've done a full it's, roll. it's for the map is bigger, but it's it's just because you're racing. It's not meant to you're not meant to look at like little details, right? Do a barrel roll. Cool. Time to air drift. Just hold your right you're or left rudder pedal down right. for long enough, and you'll get the hang of it. So I'm air drifting. That's cool. Did you see those eagles? Yep. Nice flight Is that a reference tricky. to eagle Boring flight? Yeah, I've been thinking right. about that game. I want to play that game thought. again. That was pretty is that, cool. Is that the Hoover Dam there? Or On your right? Might be. I think that's meant to be the Hoover Dam, which means Vegas should be nearby. It would be on, okay, what on, am I on, doing? Your, on your left now. Knife flight. Maintain your plane uh, with the wing oriented to bottom. What, what does that mean? This? Like that, I think. Yeah. Nice play. Okay. 
I've been to the Hoover Dam. It's pretty incredible. Just that's right there. Back okay. Until you've gone a full 360 degrees. So Vegas should be uh, kind of incredible. Looping. Man, games have come so far. <laughs> this is so cool. I'm thinking of River Raid right now, guys. Fly under the bridge. Yeah, let's see. Nope, oh, fly oh, under it, Vic. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I'm looking at the TV, which I shouldn't do. Cause Why? Because the TV has it's, a bit of a delay. Yeah, it's a second behind what I'm, what my fingers are doing. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> That's probably yeah. not what you're supposed to do. You saw that one for free, everybody. <laughs> All right, here we go. Wouldn't it be funny if you did that? And it just turned into a car, right? When you yeah. Were <laughs> I think you can do auto switcheroos like that. I think that's part of this game's experience. Okay, so I did a loop. Okay, did it. All right. Now low altitude. Take a wild guess what that one means. Just not be careful not you're not supposed to crash. That was low altitude. Come on. Landing the wrong way. Woo! I always wanted them to make a Grand Theft Auto game like this, where they do the entire country. That's coming, man. I, well, I thought they were going to do it after San Andreas. Remember on the PS2? Because they did, they did a, GTA awesome. 3 was Great a city. Flying. That was cool. Okay. And then Vice City was like two Clive, cities. Emmett, at the barn, and then San Andreas really was a whole state. Right. And then I thought the next one's going to be like the whole country, something like this, where it's a condensed version of everything. Well, if they don't do it, someone will. And I, I believe they will go into partnership with Google. I think that's what Google is. Oh, and use like Google Earth as a. That's what they're collecting all that stuff for. They're going to sell that data in some massive ways, you know? That'd be cool. And then we're going to get into games where you can walk into any one of those houses and buildings, and so you go visit yourself. Isn't that what It'll Cyberpunk 2077 is? It'll be Inception. Uh, yeah, I think so, right? That's, that, like that's you what get the they should city. do. They should, yeah. like, uh, that's why I like the Hitman games. Because they're kind of like little open worlds. Yeah. They're very, very small open but worlds. Tremendously but detailed. Very, very detailed. Yeah, yeah, I love that too. Make a game, instead of having like a whole state or whatever, have okay. just one we'll city, a relatively small city, but make it extremely detailed. Where so every NPC is doing stuff. I love that. Yeah, I totally yeah. think that. Um, okay, so unlock the rookie. I want to go back and do some street racing. And, uh, oh, I got some rewards point. Oh, that's. People are saying you can cross play with the the PS4 can cross play with the PC in Fortnite, but yeah, we, we yeah, but the problem is you can't cross play with other consoles. Which yeah, is what people want to be able to do. Right. Can I drive this bus? Can well, I, that looks like the party bus from Fortnite. Can I take of. this this guy's shoes? <laughs> <laughs> can I go into this little? Storage it's container. Not, it's not rendered inside properly. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in here? What's this, can I get a skateboard on? on? Oh, look at this. I'm just going to take this thing up. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. This is rad, man. This is really cool. I just got a little helmet on. Bonk. Oh, I keep looking at the TV. So where are you right now, geographically? Uh, I don't know. This is cool. I'm having fun. Like, instantly having a good time. The Crew 2 has done a good job at uh, giving you some really cool diversity. That's one of the big reasons for playing games. Uh, it's just a diverse assortment of activities and uh, like lots of stimulation and rewards like that. Crew 2 is, is knocking it out of the park here, so far. How does the game feel? Feels like, good. Physically to move around. Feels empty. Feels a bit lonely, like no animals, no other people. Like I, yeah, like I feel like I'm racing by myself a lot so far. Uh, but it just feels expansive and it feels uh, like that you can like, keep shaking things up, which I love. Okay, so I want to go back to the map. So I just keep pressing the circle button. Well, it says free vehicle. Can't you just take that? that? plane uh, yeah I guess right and then I can oh because the deal is you can change to any craft that you have anytime that you want okay all right then we're back to the live map so I got I have a plane and I have a uh,